warm welcome from Atlantis, Paradise Island. They do things big in the Bahamas, big beaches, big hotels, big casinos, heavyweight cruisers, heavyweight bruisers. And here's a reminder of the rules in the battle for the Metrex Trophy for the world's strongest man. All changed this year. There used to be 30 finalists, now there are 12. They go head to head in 11 different events. There are five bonus points available in each of those, at the end of which the top six men will make it through to this year's final. And throughout the event, former world's strongest man Jamie Reeves offers his expert guidance and top tips. Just two days' events to go. It really is wide open. Marius Pujanowski, the defending champion, looking handily placed. But behind him, two former winners, Carlson and Samuelson, must be getting worried that they might not make it through to the final six. Carry and drag. Well, now it's Raymond's Bergmanis up against one of the toughest and the most talented competitors in this year's competition. Are you ready? Raymond's Bergmanis is a very tough competitor, but he's got it all to do here if he's going to take any points away from the world's strongest man, Marius Pudzianowski. Well, there certainly is a lot of points at stake here. Bergmanis away well, 100 kilos now being attached to the chain, and that turns it into a massive 300 kilos. And Pudzianowski is away. He's got one event in hand over the current leader, Zavikas, and he's only two points behind the man who's in first place, but it's looking good for Puzanovsky at the moment. Bergmanis is a couple of metres behind him, and the pole is going to win it. That was a super time as well, 28.4. Big points once again. On a scale of 0 to 10, how hard were you trying there? Uh, maybe 6. This for me is 6. Uh, looking uh, uh, to Raimund, how fast? Only one, two metres faster. Win, it's okay. I did big mistakes in the middle, of course. If I don't do such mistakes, then I uh, drop with the anchor very far from from connecting chain. And if I'm not dropping far, I think maybe the whole guys told me in run together with chain, I run bar faster for him. But I'm happy. I take five points. After which. Carlson took six in a titanic duel with Minkwitz that showed the real camaraderie of this sport. Giant Farmers Walk. Each one of these implements is 160 kilograms. That's a total weight of 320 kilograms, over 700 pounds. First of all, it's got to be carried 12 meters to get one point into the scoring zone. After that, a maximum of 36 meters to get five points. This is all about grip strength. It's going to be good, but Magnus is very good at it. But uh, let's see if he's good enough. This is a very tough and heavy strongman event, but uh, I think the problem here is you know, that the surface is a bit wet and I uh, hope it don't, it don't get too slippery. I just have to make sure not to fall, so maybe I will hold back a little bit of speed and just try to make sure to finish the course instead. Take Wise words by Samuelson. He's got some points to score here if Ready. he's going to make it into the top six. The Farmer's Walk has never been a good event for Rennie Menquist. On the other hand, it's Magnus Samuelson's favourite event, so he should score highly here. And one of the reasons for that is because Magnus has got hands like shovels. Well, you can see the effects that uh, one of the squalls we've had in the aftermath of Hurricane Jean. It's wet underfoot and that will make it difficult, but already René Minkfis is falling miles behind the giant Swede. 160 kilos in each hand, that is like carrying a 26 stone man in each hand. That is a remarkable feat even to lift it up, let alone walk with it. And Minkfis is really struggling. Samuelson though will take maximum points. It's not going to be particularly quick, but this could drag him into the top six after this event. And René Minkfitz 
Look at the way his arms are being stretched by those gigantic weights. He surely can't finish it. He's after the bonus points. He's not too far away from getting maximum points, but he's staggering all over the place. The Swede finished ages ago, and Renny Minkfit says, no more, please. That looked agony for Minkfit, but it was superb by Magnus Samuelsson. The problem today is we have 100% humidity in the air, and uh, on top of that, some, some rain showers before we went. So the steel is very raw. So it, it, it doesn't bite, as we said. We, there is no... Uh, the problem is the, is, is the grip, and hopefully it will stay in the same conditions for the other guys, because uh, as it were now, it will be very tough. Deadlift. How confident are you that you can win this event? Same as a concourse? Yeah. How confident am I? Maybe 20%. I'm not too confident with the deadlift. Well, I have to say that Vasil Verastyuk is a very relaxed guy Take indeed. He takes everything in his stride and is looking superb. Left. Well, Vasil Verastyuk is lying in third place at the moment Down. after six events. Left. That first barrel goes crashing into the cage. Down. I notice, actually, like so many others, he's not Left. wearing any shoes. You might see his feet in just a Down. moment. That gives the guys a much better position to lift from. It's much easier to squat down. Mark Felix is the next to go, the Grenadian. He's got a lot of support out here and I would expect him to do well. Verastyuk is actually wearing socks with a rubber coating on the sole of his feet just for that little bit of extra grip. So Verastyuk, perhaps this is not his best event. He's still got some good events to come and he's had some brilliant events so far in this year's competition. Wants to make it into the final, but that's enough as far as the deadlift is concerned. Three lifts in just over 17 seconds. What can Mark Felix do? I'm going to approach it positively, just like I did in Britain. I'm hoping to get all the seven up today. I mean, it's kind of heavy, but I'm pretty consistent with the deadlift, so I'm looking forward to getting all of them. I'll tell you what, it would be remarkable if he did manage to get all of them up. Nobody has done it in this good. year's World's Strongest Man so far. Mark Felix gets away to a quick start. I have to say, he looks every inch a strong man. Bristling with muscles. A lot of support here. And a big cheer every time he makes one lift. His uncle was the strongest man in Grenada, so it's obviously in the family. He's going to go into the lead, and he does it comfortably. Good points for Mark Felix. He needs to make a little bit of a push now to try and make sure he gets into the top six. There's still a few events to go. And Mark Felix, one more barrel, but I think he's had enough. He really has enjoyed himself out there. There's his wife, Denny, and the two kids. Absolutely super. Right. It's uh, going to be a tough one. It's one of my favorite events, and Sudruna is very good on it as well, so it's going to be interesting. I'm good in this event, and it's went good, and nobody knows who, who win. Take your position. So the overall leader, Zavikas, on the far side, next to Sven Adelita, Carlson, Zavikas. the former champion. What ready? a contest in prospect. The York race, Carlson versus Savikas. This one's going to be very close. Left! I think everybody here will find it difficult to pick a winner, but Savikas is off well. But look at Sven Carlson go. He's got a point to prove. Carlson is outside the top six at the moment, but he's only completed five events. He might have a bit in reserve, but Savikas is coming back at him. Carlson gets it, though. Oh, my goodness. What a finish there. Sven Carlson, 17.25, and Zidrina Savikas only a shade behind. Squat lift. A great moment now for Brian Turner, who's come in for the injured Hugo Take Girard. Take position. And he takes over the Canadian's points total as well. What's the big struggle here? Is it the legs? 
Yeah, legs lower back, uh, and it's quite a deep squat, so it should be fun. Lift. I'm not sure if fun is the Hands right out. word, but Brian Turner, squat. Scotland's strongest man, making his debut in this year's World's Strongest Man competition. Good You'd lift. be delighted. So one good lift there, 15 kilos squat. is added, and there is Andres Muramets. So we have both our event reserves good lift. in fighting head-to-head. -head. Well, Brian squat. Turner, we've seen him in Britain's Strongest Man quite a few times. I think he's lost a bit of weight. He's certainly looking a bit fitter, but no joy there for Brian Turner. Only two lifts, no bonus points, so not a great baptism for Brian Turner. Just being helped out of those very, oh, very heavy down. knee Brian ramps. Turner, two good and two lifts. good lifts confirmed by the announcer. But what will Andres Muramets do? If he does over two, Turner will get no points. How do you do this event? Uh, it's machine squat. It's uh, quite different than uh, only uh, normal squat. So I don't know how it's going. I'll try to take my best. I think three or four reps. It's, uh, it's good for me. It wouldn't be good news for Brian Turner, though, if Muramets did achieve four. Lift. 20 stone body Stands weight. Out. Squat. Quite a wide stance there. Let's just see how Good far lift. he's squatting down as that extra 15 Squat. kilos gets added to the already massive total. He took Good a little lift. bit of a double bounce there. Squat. So he's equaled Brian Turner. One more to go into the lead and take the extra Good point lift. and he does it very easily. Now he's Squat. going to be chasing his own bonus points. Oh, and he can't do it. So Brian Turner defeated but not beaten by a huge margin, only one extra repetition by the Estonian. This is Atlantis, Paradise Island. Stone Cycle. You know when you go shopping and you've got too many bags and they start slipping off your arms before you can get to the car? Well, this is the stone circle, 300 kilograms, 660 pounds, to be carried as far as possible until, like your groceries, your arms just can't take any more. It's not bad for me, yeah, but uh, it's, uh, I look when uh, yoga uh, testing, it's not, not easy. And uh, that is a different yoke. It's a very thin, thin, thin bar. Yeah. And then, but all is okay. I think it's a rest one and a half days and I fresh again and I think we'll be okay. So Raymond's Bergmanis, he's certainly got a chance of making it Take through to position. yet another final if he does Are well you here. Lift. In fact, there's still three more events to go after this one. So still a little bit of work to be done by Bergmanis. It's difficult to talk in terms of these guys being real athletes. But if there was one real athlete amongst them, it would be Raymond Bergmanis. He's very powerful. He's very fast over short distances. Zavikas looks on. He's got it all to do in just a moment. But Raymond Bergmanis, the Latvian champion, goes around number two and is looking strong. Leaning back a little bit now. And that bar is getting a little bit lower. If he can get two and a half, it's four bonus points, and he's down. I think it is two and a half, just by Raymond Bergmanis. That was excellent. Raymond is very good in this event. It's one of my worst events. Well, I'm not sure that Zavikas has actually got any weaknesses. He showed tremendous consistency at last year's World's Strongest Man, where he finished in second place in the final. Are Still the overall leader. Tell me. Lift. Savikas 
will like to get tucked underneath there. Lift it strongly with his legs and away we go. The grip so, so important. He's got his fingers and his thumbs locked together. There's no moisture in there at all. You can see the whiteness of the French chalk that these guys use. And that gets an iron grip across that bar and he's going well. Well, he's headed now towards the end of lap number two. And if he can do that, he's got three bonus points. And he gets them. Oh, he's gone down, though. So that means that Raymond Bergmanus gets the extra point for defeating the overall leader. That was interesting. Four Fingal's fingers weren't enough for Tommy Lotter as he came up against the Vickers, who managed five in 39.95. Plenty of Viking power from Sven Carlson saw off Miramuts in the wrestling, but not enough Scottish power for Brian Turner. He was beaten by Virastruk, who looked ominously powerful. Truck pull. I'm going to just go for it. You know, I want to go flat out. Mark Felix has Ready to go up. flat out. Marius Pudzianowski is the opposition, and he is very Take tough indeed. Sign. So the Grenadian favourite here in the Bahamas gets this 10-ton truck underway. He competed in Britain's Strongest Man this year and this certainly was not his best event. He's much better at pressing events with those giant arms, but he's going all right. Come on, Mark Felix, you've got a lot of work to do. Well, wearing rock climbing boots just to get a bit of extra purchase on the tarmac road here. He's wobbling about all over the place. He needs to try and keep in a straight line. But luckily, the truck is still going. If he could just use those arms a bit more to pull him forward, that would do him the world of good. 35 metres the course, and the front of the 10 ton lorry has to go over the line, so he's not finished yet. Puffing and blowing, he's got it. He's got his five bonus points, but will it be fast enough to beat the pole, Marius Budzinovsky? I've been doing a lot of practicing, a lot of training. Um, before I come here, um, I just remember that I'm still another weight, and that's what I did. And I just drive straight through, keep my head straight up. So I'm pleased with that. I want only finish this event because uh, go to final, I have a lot of points. I want only finish. Well, I don't think there's ready? any doubt at all that he Coming. will finish, but how fast? Now, Marius Pudzianowski is actually one of the lightest men here, despite the fact, of course, he's over 20 stone in body weight. And he's got away to a rather ponderous start. Now he's picking up speed. This is impressive. It would help him even more if he could stay a little bit lower with his back parallel to the ground. He's dropped the rope. He got going. And now he feels the best policy is to sprint with it. Oh, my goodness. This is very impressive. But has he done too much too soon? Pozhanovsky just looking across. That was so impressive. He's beaten Mark Felix's time by about 13 seconds. My goodness. Safe lift. New thing. I've never done it before. I think uh, we must treat this event with some kind of respect because you can't uh, kickstart it as we are used to. So uh, I'm afraid that we need a few tries before we can get the hang of this and hopefully hopefully it will treat me nice the first time it's could be it could be great could be a disaster well we'll certainly have to wait and see magnus samuelson up first he's up against adrian rollinson and this equipment certainly not forgiving in terms of the impact it has on the performer lust now magnus samuelson I think he's going to find this hard. He's exceptionally strong, but he's very, very tall. He's going to have to lift it way, way up there. He's two meters in height, but actually this is looking quite impressive, I have to say. He's never been terribly strong overhead in the past. Now watch these two safes on the bottom. 115 kilos, not too much swinging around there. If there was, as Adrian Rollinson looks on, that bar would be twisting in and out of the grip of the strongman, and that would make it incredibly difficult. There's his brother nearest the camera. They certainly are a family of strength men. 
and his wife is a former Sweden's strongest woman. She's quite an athlete herself. Now Magnus has got a problem here. We don't want him to run out of time. 75 seconds the time limit. He's got a little bit in reserve and looking just to get one or two more up. The most we've seen so far is nine. That was Tommy Lota and Sven Carlson. So Scandinavia, it seems, are the kings of the safe lift. Now, what can he do? He's gone. Wasn't time to do that ninth one, but eight is a very good target for Adrian Rollinson to go for. I'm pretty pleased. Five points is five points. Uh, more, more than pleased with the shoulder power I have. It's, uh, it felt like nothing, but then again, you can't. If you do, if you go too fast, you might, uh, you might pump yourself up or stress yourself into problems. I decided to go on steady pace and try to get ten, but came a bit short of that. But still, still pleased with five points. I've done all right in the Britons at it, but obviously it's a piece of equipment that can wobbles all over the place. Everybody can press 120 or sort of thing, you know. But it's just getting the piece of equipment right, I think, and Magnus is a good presser, so we'll wait and see. You've got to be a very good weightlifter, I feel, to do this event. Let's Take see how Adrian Rollinson gets on. Lust. It really isn't just a question of pushing no. and hoping. You've got to get the coordination between your legs, your back, your shoulders and your arms no. working as one. Going for number three. Down. And the bonus points are given on four, six, eight, and ten repetitions as Down. Samuelson watches his arch rival in this event, Adrian Rollison. That one was not given by the referee, and neither will that one be either. Adrian just has to steady himself. He looked a little bit over anxious here. So three in a row he's failed, and that is four in a row, my goodness. And uh, there's his son in the red in the background there in the England football shirt, cheering on for dad. But it's all about failure at the moment for Adrian. Oh, he's got it. That is better. He's still some way away from Magnus Samuelsson's lead, but he's done two in a row. That will give him confidence. Come on, dad. His wife, Helen, is there and his other son supporting Adrian Rollinson as they do so often. That one probably won't be given because it fell outside of the prescribed area. He can't quite manage it. He runs out of time anyway. Six repetitions from Adrian and Samuelson has beaten him. If I just make the first stone, then I know I make all five. Because that, it's not the way, normally it's not the weight of the, of the big ones that uh, is a problem for me because I'm strong in this movement. The problem could be the light one if you throw it and miss. And so I, yeah, you still have to stay focused, but power-wise, it's, it's a good event for me. It's a pretty safe card. You're obviously six foot four, five. It's very important to have the height in this, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, me and Magnus bought these big guys, and uh, it's a, a little bit easy for Magnus, but it's, it's for me too. Tommy Lotta Get up ready. against Magnus Samuelsson. Magnus Samuelson has got the fastest time ever recorded at World's Strongest Man on the Stones. Tommy Lott has got his work cut out now. Go! Well, this is the first time I've ever seen the man on the far side, Tommy Lotter, go up against Magnus Samuelson. In fact, the first time I've ever seen him go on the Atmos Stones. And already Samuelson has got two up, going for number three. Tommy Lotter only on number two. And Samuelson is going like a train. He's a former world record holder for this event in terms of time to get all five stones up. And already he's on the fifth and final one, 160 kilos. And he's got it. That was superb. Magnus Samuelson, 31.38, exactly the same time as Adrian Rollinson did in an earlier program. So those are the two fastest men so far. And Tommy Lotter at the moment is struggling just a little bit. Looks as though he's run out of steam a wee bit. Now he's getting a bit of coaching from the master, and he did it. In the end, that was good. But Samuelson, certainly number one in Atlas Stones for the time being. And that result will certainly take him up the leaderboard. 
it does, but the key thing is that not everybody has played the same number of events. So the battle for the Metrex trophy is wide open, four men within one point. And one thing's for sure, a big name is bound to miss out on the final. One day to go, and it's now or never with places in the final at stake.